Hey video doers and viewers, welcome to this edition of The Studio Life. Today we're going to talk about noise reduction in the live production environment. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the cart, the studio life, and today we're talking about noise. One of the things we know in the production space is that noise sucks, and we know from the client's perspective that noise sucks. It's distracting, it gets in the way, and it feels like it's not professional. Now, we spend a lot of money on these microphones and these booms, and we invest an awful lot. We've got mixers and all kinds of tools, and yet we run into this noise problem. And, and and it's because it's organic, it really happens. It's part of the electronics, it's part of the ambient world, it is just noise. And when we're out there on the street, there's background noise, there are kids playing, there are cars going by, there's wind blowing, there's all this stuff going on in the world, and it really is just a lot of noise. And I wanted today to talk a little bit about live noise reduction. Now in the non-live world, we go out and we record whatever is out there. We plug the microphone into the field mixer or into the camera, we, and we turn up the gain in order to be able to hear what's out there. And we try to get a good level, and then we bring it back to the studio in the editing suite, where we have the opportunity to go ahead and try to fix that noise. We can go into the EQ, and we can try to find the spot where the noise is causing a problem. And we know that noise sits at the high frequencies and at the lowest of the low frequencies, and so we add high pass and low pass filters and we end up gradually cleaning up the noise. We then can take different forms of EQ and try to identify the noise, notch that noise out, ultimately increase the EQ on other frequencies in order to kind of make up for it and fill the sound back out. And ultimately we have what we hope is a reasonably noise free product. Now that's a perfect world. We have our own favorite product here in the studio. We use Isotope, which has a great vocal noise reduction. It also has a great spectral noise repair tool that we, we really do love. It takes a little bit more work and nuance, but it does work. And we can also sometimes find frequencies that cause a problem, maybe a car alarm outside, and even identify those frequencies and make them go away. In the live environment, however, we have a need in the moment to fix the problem. Now. Our software switcher, we use vMix. We'll have some episodes on vMix at some point. We actually have our plugins built into vMix and we can add noise reduction live. Now that takes computing power. Depending on the number of inputs, depending on the load we're placing on the system, that may not be a good strategy, especially if we're doing a lot of internal recording, we're really burdening the system. So sometimes we don't wanna add a whole lot more than we need to add. But other times we're out in the field. We're recording in an environment that's very complex. The horns going by, the kids screaming, the wind blowing, the ocean rumbling. Uh, somebody upstairs might be going by with a cart. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And we might be recording live to air. We might be recording live to a client where the client is actually sitting there with headphones on listening and they're hearing a whole lot of stuff. They're hearing the stuff above and outside and inside and with the cars and the ocean and the wind, but they're also hearing the microphone gain. And the more, the farther the microphone is away from us, the more the gain gets turned up. They're hearing electronic noise, self noise. They're hearing all kinds of stuff. And then the headphone amp itself is causing additional noise. And ultimately the perception is that something is going wrong and something can't be fixed. And sometimes we're giving the footage, we're, we're a studio, sometimes we're giving the footage to the client to take home and we're trusting them to know how to fix the noise. And a lot of these clients, they don't know how to fix the noise and they end up thinking that something was less than professional. So that puts us in a dilemma. So in some cases, we try to record a raw feed as well as an EQ feed, or we try to give them a feed where they get to listen to it without noise, but we're preserving the integrity of the original. But on a live stream, things like that, we really don't have the luxury of all of that. So today, I wanted to take the time to focus on a product that we use to help fix this. Now, it's important to note that nobody's paying us for this. You're hearing 
the honest truth from a bunch of people who use the gear every single day. And we'll tell you the good and the bad. And the bad on some of this stuff is that it's freaking expensive. The good is it can help solve some very real problems in the moment, something that we need to fix at that time. So let's talk a little bit about what we do with the noise. Now we've got self noise with the microphone. And so there are a couple of tools that we can use right off the bat. We've got a mixer sitting right here and we can start. We can turn the high frequencies down and the low frequencies down. We could try to identify the noise. But once again, on a live stream, we start to run out of options, especially on small crews. We use small crews here and we're not loaded with audio engineers focusing just on the noise. They might do some quick EQ and then they wanna move on. And nothing really fixes noise if you've gotta crank up the gain or if you've got a lot of ambience or the microphone is set at a fair distance from the subject. Even this microphone is set at a pretty fair distance from me. And that's causing a little bit of an extra pull on power and therefore an additional component of noise. So I wanted to take the time today to talk a little bit about the Cedar Noise Reduction System. And again, this is just for you to kind of get to know. It's not a thorough pixel peeping in terms of every aspect of this, but it's a, it'll get you started. It'll tell you what we have and why we use it. Now, what we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to improve the sound. Now I will tell you, our philosophy on this can vary. There are times where we're going to overload this. We're not going to try to, to pixel peep, as they say when it comes to uh, evaluating the scientific components of every aspect of what we're doing. Sometimes we want to get that noise out. Now, this is not as big a, as big a deal if we have music in the background or something like that, where we have other microphones or, or music bed or something but there are times where we're gonna push it. We are not trying to find the most ideal sound, we're trying to find less noise. On the other hand, there are times where we're going to be way more gentle. We're just gonna to try to take the edge off a little bit, maybe try to bring out the vocal a little bit, the voice a little bit more. So what we do, there's no fixed formula for how we try to accomplish noise reduction. There's just some idea of what our goal is. Now the Cedar, is actually a remarkably simple product. There are very few buttons and knobs on the Cedar. And for the most part, it does what it's supposed to do. Now it's not cheap. I've got to be honest with you. I don't think anybody in the world would suggest that this tiny little box is cheap. The question that you have to ask yourself, like any other investment that we make in the studio is whether or not what you get is worth it. And for us, the ability to, to reduce noise in the field is always worth it especially if a client is sitting there on headphones. I wanted to show this unit. Now we've got a mixer here, and so we have the opportunity to affect a little bit of what you're hearing. Now overall, I'm not wearing headphones. I really don't know what you're hearing. We've got some Sennheisers up above, and, and so hopefully the sound is beautifully clean, but let's screw up the sound a little bit here, and, and let's see what the, what the Cedar can do. I'm gonna put some headphones on, and I'll try to listen right along with you. So the cedar, so the cedar looks sort of like this. It's got two inputs and two outputs on the analog side. One microphone in, and it has a corresponding output. Right now we have the cedar built in line, meaning we have the microphone going directly into the cedar box and out of the cedar box into the mixer. Now, the cedar is an actually quite a powerful preamp. So it has phantom power built in. It's able to really get microphone levels much higher than we could ever really want. Now I want to make sure that you understand what we're doing here is live. We're not staging this in any way. We're really just plugging in microphones directly into the Cedar device, the Cedar directly into the mixer and the mixer directly back into the camera. This is not exactly what we would do on a traditional shoot, but this is what we're doing now to try to give you an example of, of sort of the impact that the Cedar has on the audio. Now the Cedar has some preamps built in. So the microphones we're using are the Sennheisers, the, uh, the hypercardioid, and, and that requires phantom power. The Cedar is providing the phantom power to those microphones. So what we have is we have overhead microphones that have some degree of noise. And actually, if you were to attenuate, bring up the, uh, the volume on that, 
You can hear that noise. It's, it's out there. It's in the gain. Now, these microphones are extraordinarily qual extraordinary quality microphones. They're the MKH-50s by Sennheiser. They run at about $1,200 each. The microphone line, so everything is great. Everything is wonderful. It's highest end, very brilliant. It's wonderful. And yet you hear the noise. Now, in a traditional environment, I might knock the noise out a little bit by reducing some of the EQ on the high end. I might explore whether or not there's some low end noise that, that needs to be adjusted. There's also a high pass filter built in over here. So there are a few things I could do if I had a mixer. But a lot of the time I don't have a mixer. I'm really recording to the field recorder or I'm really recording for a live stream and I've got to get that thing direct to air. And I, I will, as a tangent, there are a couple of field recorders out there that have the ability to add plugins for noise reduction and they can be quite a good quality plugin. And so if you're looking for something like that, again, take advantage of it. Getting rid of the noise is critical to a great production. It's just, it's such a major impact. Some of us in, in the, this world believe that audio is the most important part of a quality production. The Cedar exists with really only three components that you get to control. There's what they call the setup, something called the bias, and then there's the learn command. And apart from that, you just turn it on or off. That's all you get. Now the setup allows you to adjust the gain that the, micro, that the preamps here are producing. So go into the setup. Oops, there we go. And you can see that I'm controlling the level of the microphone. So I'm impacting the overall gain. Now I'm paying attention to my mixer to try to make sure I'm not clipping in any way, but that's the power of that preamp. It's not my favorite preamp in the world, but I'll tell you something. It's great to have that extra gain right where I need it. So you want to be a little bit gentle, but you've got your gain. Get your levels. Now, once you are done and you've got a reasonable level, you can take yourself out of setup. The next command is set by pushing down. Well, let's turn the DNS on. Let's turn on the digital noise reduction. And you can hear it start to vanish really quick. It's unbelievable. The button that is associated with that input channel, if you push that down, it turns into bias. Now bias is trying to assess the amount of noise that is sitting out there in that track. So you can make your adjustments to try to figure out where the bias sits. And here there's just a lot of noise. Now the learn command will stop and listen to the room. So if we quiet down, the learn command will listen and will understand that that is the amount of noise and will set a noise profile based on that. So here's without. And here's with. Can you hear the difference, Nick? Yeah, see, we can hear the difference. Now, once, we're, once we have assessed the amount of noise that we have and we've got the DNS triggered, now the only thing left is a little dial that applies the noise reduction. This dial is saying how much to apply. So it hears the noise, it understands the noise, and now we're reducing the noise. Now, like all things, as we add the noise reduction, we may introduce some sounds that don't sound purely natural, or we might be cutting out frequencies that may other otherwise benefit us. So once we have the amount of gain set up, we've got the amount of gain set up on the mixer, we're listening, we understand what's going on here. We've tried to assess the amount of bias, the amount of noise that's actually on the recording. We've possibly hit the learn command, and we let the device try to understand the noise that's going on in the room. Then it's a question of turning the noise reduction on or off and deciding how much attenuation we would like to apply to the noise, how much we would like to reduce the overall noise level. So it's pretty simple. That's without any noise reduction. That's with noise reduction. 
and then that's zero attenuation. and maximum attenuation. So this device can really suck the noise out of a room. Now, I don't know what it sounds like in the camera, but I can tell you it still sounds reasonably natural to me sitting right here with this mixer, and I'm 100% cranked on this device. And I can hear some lost frequencies in certain areas of, of that spectrum, but we are 100% cranked on noise reduction. We have the air conditioning going as well. It's worth noting here in the studio that we do have a little bit of air going through the vents, and we can hear a little bit of air conditioning. We've got some air conditioning going on. It is summer here in L.A. And that's where we end up. So again, let's start out by taking off the noise reduction. Turning on the noise reduction. Off. On. World of difference. So, the value of a noise free final product. I alluded to the fact earlier that I believe, and I know many people who have taught me through the years believe, that audio is among the most important components when it comes to a final product. Now, I don't know how that is assessed. I can tell you how I assess it, which is that I, I get a headache. I get a headache when the noise, when the sound is not good. I want to hear it clearly and cleanly. It needs to be tight. And when I start to hear all kinds of other sounds, I, I get a headache. So the ability to reduce noise to me is paramount. And I'm willing to push my noise reducers a little bit extra in order to make sure that we can achieve that. In any event, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of the Cedar. It is not the only product out there, but there are not many products out there. It comes at a fairly high price tag for most people, but again, just think about whether it's worth it to you. The isotopes of the world, they're, they're cheaper, they're software-based, they tend to be post-processing based. And so you've got some pros and cons, but overall, I hope that this helps to explain a little bit about what we do, why we do it, and the value of some of the products that we have. So in any event, The Studio Life, live from the cart. See you next time. <laughs>